What's up, design family, and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you guys back on the channel. On today's episode, I'll be giving you guys my must-haves. If you're starting a apparel brand, if you're starting a sports brand, an active brand, what are the items that you should get started with, right? What are the items that you're going to get a biggest return on your investment? How are you going to get the largest impact with your customers? And how are you going to create a full collection that your customers can ultimately take seriously and that is going to help you stand out from the competition? The last thing you want to do is to spend your time your money on pieces that are not going to sell well, they're not going to represent your brand correctly, and ultimately, you don't want to spend the time nor spend the effort in terms of the products that you should not be launching. So what are these products? Well, watch this episode and you're about to find out. Welcome to Fit Design TV. Are you interested in sports fashion, design, and manufacturing? Are you establishing your own brand? Noor looking good. Anthony, how are we doing? Do you want to? Thank you. Well, you've come to the right place. Lights. Camera. Action. Getting right into the episode. The first framework that I always like to adopt when it comes to selecting a collection is I like to look at my customers, right? I try to understand what are the pieces that they're going to be using on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's split our collections between genders. If we're an active wear brand, a sports wear brand, we're going to be catering towards the men's and the women's demographics. So if I look at the typical female demographic, I'm going to see what are the key pieces that I would need to generate in order to satisfy 80 to 90% of my customer's wardrobe. And when I'm thinking about this, I'm definitely thinking about tops and bottoms. And I'm also looking at the type of customer that I would like to engage with, right? This is someone who goes to the gym, either maybe they're into yoga, they're into fitness, uh, they're into running. So what are they using on a day-to-day -day basis? For sure, I know that a legging is going to be one of the key components, or let's just say the central components of my collection. And I'm going to build my collection around a great pair of leggings, right? I love the legging idea because it's such a flexible and versatile product. It's a product that can be paired up, it can be paired down, it can be put with a hoodie, it can be put with a sports bra, it can be added to a tank top. It's also a product that a lot of people see as a key functional piece in the wardrobe. So definitely first thing is going to be the legging. Then I'm most likely going to add a top to this. Why would I want to add a top? So I typically like to create my products with versatility, especially as a starting collection. I want the products to be able to work within the collection with any of the other pieces of this collection. So if I have a legging, I want it to work with all of the tops in my collection. This is going to come down to the fabrics I select, the design cues I actually implement, and ultimately the colorways I select. But for sure, the second piece that I'll be adding if I'm creating a women's collection would be a sports bra. The type of bra that I'll create, again, this is an open-ended question because I need to create something that's unique, but at the same time, since this is going to be one of the key pieces, it should be a versatile bra that gets the job done. So something functional, something that is going to allow customers to get a lot of use out of it. It shouldn't be a very polarizing product. It shouldn't be a product that is going to only be able to be used in very, very specific use case scenarios. So something with a good amount of support, something with a medium to high support, uh, something that is comfortable and accessible to wear. So not anything that's too open and nothing that is too, too closed. I want something with a good amount of coverage, but at the same time, something that can actually act and function as a sports bra. So that's the second piece that I want to implement. The third piece, I'm going to be looking at sort of the generalistic day-to-day -day items. So a t-shirt is going to be key in here, especially for women. What type of shirt might I want to implement? So when I think about this, I think about a piece that can also be used in a casual scenario and in a more sporty scenario. So I might go for a cut that's a little bit more casual. I might not go for a raglan sleeve. I might go for a satin sleeve t-shirt, right? This is going to give me the versatility to allow this product to be paired up and paired down. Also, the type of fabric that I might want to select. If I've selected a very sports performance oriented blend for my leggings and my bras, here I might want to go a little bit more casual. I might want to go for a lightweight t-shirt, something that's very, very breathable, maybe a blend of cotton polyester spandex, or maybe cotton baboon spandex, or maybe a viscose polyester spandex blend, right? Something very soft, silky, with a little bit of a plush feel, something that you can easily wear within the gym and you can wear outside of the gym. Also, I want to be able to layer this t-shirt over a bra and under the hoodie, which is going to be that my next product that I want to create. Why is a hoodie a great option? So one thing when it comes to outerwear, hoodies, unlike in traditional fashion pieces, hoodies can be worn all year round, especially in the sports or demographic, because these types of pieces are seen as warm up pieces. They're seen as functional pieces needed to get your body temperature to a specific degree in order to actually begin your workout. 
So a hoodie is going to actually be functional all year round. You're going to be able to sell it in the spring season, in the summer season, in the winter season, and in the fall season. Also, a hoodie can be done as a unisex product, right? It's a product that can be done for both men and women within the same category. It's a bit of an oversized fit, and it's a product that actually looks good on all body types. Because you're cutting further away from the skin, you're able to actually achieve a lot of flexibility between who you fit the garment to. So a hoodie would definitely be the next piece. If you have the additional budget, add a jogger in there. So the jogger here can be either an oversized jogger. So if your budget is quite limited, you will go for a unisex hoodie with an oversized fit, a unisex jogger with an oversized fit. That's definitely in vogue right now. It's definitely in trend. But if you had a little bit more of a sports performance focused sort of aesthetic, you might want to go for a tapered or a fitted jogger. You may even be able to use the same fabric as your legging fabric, but maybe peach it, right? When you peach it, you brush the surface and you create more of a cotton-like feel to the garment. So a jogger would definitely be my last piece that I would add. And if you had, let's just say, the additional budget for maybe a tank top, with that tank top, it would depend on the specific purpose of your brand. So if your focus was more on athleisure, more on activewear, something that's much more casual, it might be an oversized tank top meant to be layered over a t-shirt. If your focus was on sports performance and you're all about hitting the gym, you're all about creating pieces that are very functional, that are sweat wicking, that are compressive, then I'll create a tank top that had a compression or a compression base to it. So again, some of these pieces will depend on your specific product set and your specific brand set. And now on to the men's. So the men's will approach it in a slightly different way. Assuming that we selected our women's items to hold the unisex hoodie and the unisex jogger, here we can move straight into t-shirts. If I look at some of the largest sellers for men's, they're definitely going to be tops. So basic tops and basic bottoms. So joggers and tops are going to be key selling pieces and as well shorts. So Definitely a t-shirt that is gym focused here. If you're a sports or brand, you want to create a piece that is going to allow you to sweat in it. It's going to allow you to work out in it. It's going to give you the range of motion you need. So potentially cutting something as a raglan sleeve or as a saddle sleeve, using a polyester spandex blend with a slick finish, something that's able to wick away sweat, something that's quick dry, something that has high stretch and high retention to allow it to compress itself onto your body, something with a slim fit. So if you're a lower body weight or a lower body fat percentage, this is going to look good on you. And ultimately something that you can comfortably work out in with reinforced seams, maybe flat seams, maybe a mesh panel here and there, just something that is a no brainer when it comes to working out in. Something with large range of motion, something that's very comfortable and something that's synthetic so that you can wick away sweat easily. The second option that I might go for would be a casual t-shirt. So what is the sort of, what are the nuances? What are the differences between a casual t-shirt and a performance t-shirt? First would be the fabric, right? Whereas with a performance t-shirt, we're using a synthetic blend. We want something that's durable. We want something that's sweat wicking. We want something that's quick drying. With a casual t-shirt, we need something that visually allows you to represent that shirt as a casual shirt. So here we might go for a cotton spandex blend. The cotton is going to bring in comfort, breathability, and a non-allergenic response. And the spandex is going to bring in shape retention. It's going to bring in durability, longevity. So with the cotton, you're getting a very casual looking shirt, something you can wear in the gym because of its shape retention and out of the gym because of its approach, its appeal, and its overall comfort. The way that I cut the garment is going to be different as well. Sure, with a casual shirt, I still want to cut close to the body, but there's certain areas that I will cut further away from the body. So I'll cut close to the body in the biceps. I'll cut close to the body in the chest, but towards the waist and towards the bottom, I will cut further away from the body to not accentuate those sort of areas, right? If you're a heavyweight or you're a heavier body weight, you will not want to call attention to your love handles. You won't want to call attention to anything that does not accentuate that V taper, right? With women, it's more about that hourglass. With men, it's more about that V taper, a wider shoulders, wider chest, and a thinner waist. And I will use my casual shirt to accentuate the best out of the physiques, even if they may not be there yet. Next, I will definitely want to bring in a jogger. So when it comes to the jogger, I want a jogger that is most likely, and again, it will depend on the overall brand. If I'm more of a sports performance brand, I will go for a woven jogger, something that's very technical, something that's lightweight, something that wicks sweat away, that's waterproof, that's windproof, that's climate proof. If I have more of a street focused or a casual focused brand, then I might go for a fleece jogger or a terry jogger, but nonetheless, a jogger is going to be a key piece or a key item that I'll want. I'll also bring in some form of pump cover, right? So the casualty is a great 
fitted everyday t-shirt. The pump cover is a fashion focused garment that can be worn in the gym and out of the gym. It'll be worn in the gym because it is a functional piece. It's something you wear over your clothing. When you come into the gym, you warm up in it. It's also a vibe. It's a light, you know, it's a style. It's something that's very trendy right now, but it's also something that when you wear it out of the gym, you can pair with a pair of jeans. You can, you can pair it with a pair of joggers, right? A pair of sweats to create that more laissez faire, that very, let's just say, careless attitude that's definitely in trend right now. The last thing that I would definitely add for the male demographic would be a pair of functional shorts. So these are not fleece shorts, nor are they Terry shorts. What I'd recommend is going to be a pair of lined shorts. The outer layer being made out of a woven lightweight material with some stretch in it, and the inner layer made out of a either a very heavy duty mesh, so something that with a lot of stretch, but that's very breathable, or a great interlock polyester spandex blend or a nylon spandex blend. Why would I want to give a compression liner to a short? One thing that is quite sort of a user experience thing is for men, we don't want to create a lot of vulnerabilities in those areas, right? So we don't want the shorts to ride up. We don't want to reveal too much of leg. We want to create something that when we're stretching, when we're running, um, it's very comfortable to wear, right? Let's just say we're foam rolling or let's just say we're squatting. We want something that allows us to feel put in place. That's why a short with a compression liner is the best of both worlds. Not only is it a functional look, but it's a very technical look that again, is definitely in style right now. The last category that I'll have to mention is going to be accessories. So if you have the budget for it, or if you are the type of brand that wants to expand its categories to include accessories, the main accessories that you might want to call out are going to be a hat. With hats, there are a ton of different hats out there. There's a bucket hat, there's a six panel hat, there's a baseball cap, there's a unstructured dad hat. The one that I would most likely go for would either be a unstructured dad hat, so something that's Again, it'll be a six panel hat, but it won't have a buckram on the front. So this would be very casual. It would be a very everyday sort of hat versus the baseball cap or the trucker hat. Sure, they'll still be casual, but they'll have more of a sporty appearance. The look will be much more structured. So again, it'll depend on the specific use case scenario you're going for. And then when it comes to bags, you have two key types of bags. Either you go for a backpack, something that's meant to be worn on your back, something that's versatile, something that's not too large, not too small, maybe a 30 liter bag would be great. And then a duffel bag would also be a great option. So the backpack would be if you're more of a athleisure brand, something that's more casual. And the duffel bag would be more if you're a hardcore gym, sports performance oriented brand. Well guys, that is it. That is a wrap on this episode. Hopefully you've gained a thing or two from this episode and you know the key pieces that you should be incorporating into your initial collection. Let me know if you believe that any of the pieces that I mentioned should not be included in this list or if I've missed out any key pieces that you would have personally included. Also, I offer personalized one-on-one -on -one consultation calls and I have limited slots every single week. So check the link in the description. Let's just say you're a sports or brand or a fashion brand looking to start your apparel collection. What pieces should you start with? How do you source manufacturers? How do you market yourself? Well, I can help you out with those answers and with those questions and much, much more by checking the link in the description. Guys, from the very bottom of my heart, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.